to DC. I have to say so far, the most underwhelming city I have ever been to as a touring comedian. No offense. If you live in DC and you love it, just know I have not traveled to many corners of this city, which I'm sure is beautiful. I have been to the, uh, the White House. I forgot the name for White House. Hey, American education. Here's an example of how you failed. Someone who passed every level of you, well, not every level, I suppose that a graduate degree uh, would be a level, but every mandatory level of you forgot the name for White House. White House, underwhelming. The, the outside of the White House, if you're wondering if it's like austere and people are crying, no, it, it's basically like Times Square. The outside of the White House is has a real Times Square sort of vibe to it. And uh, walked up to the Washington Monument, most boring building ever. The Washington Monument might as well be a pile of dirt. And I know that sounds harsh, but I feel like if there's a building I could potentially design, which I have no architectural background, I, uh, I have broken anything that I have ever tried to build. But if there was a single building, if you put a, you put a, a, you know, knife to my throat and you said you have to build a building, I would build the Washington Monument. Whoever got the contract for the Washington Monument must have been so psyched. That some, some guy, some genius... I, I don't know the history of the Washington Monument, but some absolute genius who did not have a background in building, design, architecture, put his name in to bid for a project and got it. And then was like, no, 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 no. I don't know how to build anything. No, 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 no. And then in a flash of brilliance, this guy just went, oh, I have an idea. Guys, this would be the best way to uh, honor Washington. We're gonna just make a big, just a stack of cinder blocks all the way up. <laughs> really? We're not gonna put like a few windows? No, 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 no. Windows would ruin it. We, oh, oh, windows, you gaudy, you gaudy prick? No, we're gonna just make a, just all the way up. Won't it look a little bit like phallic in nature? Yes. Yes, it will, but that is this country and that is who we are as people. Um, but we're having a great time here in, uh, in Washington, D.C. No, we're not, but it's, it's fine. And we have shows at the Comedy Loft tonight. La yesterday I woke up and I realized I did not get tickets to here. So the fact that I am here in this room which uh, I don't know how much I can reveal, but let, let's let's take a little let's take a little look real quick. So this is my room. This is this is the room. This is the I'm gonna do a quick flash around. It's the smallest hotel room I've ever seen in my entire life. It's so small, it boggles my mind that someone would pay money to be here and walk in, and this is the room. Um, I feel like, I, I don't know if you can see this folks. Um, I cannot back the chair up. The chair, the chair does not have, the bed is touching the chair and the chair is touching the, uh, the desk. So <laughs> just a little room tour, just a little room. Yeah. You know, the exposed brick does give a little je ne sais quoi chat. Uh, it gives the je ne sais quoi of, um, we just decided to not finish this wall. That's what it said. Yeah. Th that's, that was such a funny trick that they played on you guys where, it, and, and me too, where they were like, no exposed brick is nice. Sure. Or lazy. One of the two. It could also be lazy. Uh, L.A. Comedy Life. Uh, yes, I will definitely watch Nganu, Joshua. Uh, you get two guys who are that big and strong together in a room. I will watch it no matter what they are doing. And I know a lot of you think maybe I mean something suggestive by that. And I do. 
but that's a great question. Anybody have questions? I wanted to make this kind of a AMA, ask me anything about the road, not that I have anything groundbreaking to say about it, but I'm I'm coming going from DC to Atlanta, which I think is going to be a pretty pretty cool uh switcheroo. Because like I said, DC I'm going to go ahead and say DC has uh, the negatives of a lot of cities put together. Um, it, uh, in the area I am saying, I am staying in, not a lot of beauty, not a lot of, uh, interesting restaurants and so far from what I'm seeing. And it also has a lot of douchebags. This, this city per capita, and by the way, I I lived in Boston, DC might have the highest number of douchebags per capita, at least from what I have seen. Ooh, this is a great question. Uh, what do you eat when you're on the road? I tr I've gotten into the habit, this is a pro tip, I've gotten in the habit of going to a grocery store as soon as I land in a city because you can really screw yourself by not having access to food and having to go to a restaurant you don't trust. I try to go to one nice restaurant and I try to look up what city does good stuff. Like here it's Ethiopian. So I'm going to go to at least one good Ethiopian restaurant. But the rest of it, it's granola, right? It's nothing special. We don't have a refrigerator in this room either. Uh, I don't know if you could tell, but if they put a mini fridge in this room, the bed wouldn't fit. So that's, uh, that's difficult. But, um... So we, we we just got a bunch of dry food, and I'll usually eat like one meal at a restaurant. Uh, that's how we're we're balling out on the road. I'm gonna be honest with you. We're ball. We're eating the we're eating the same diet as a college student backpacking through Europe. I scrounge enough money to go to a restaurant once a day, and then I scurry away to eat like bananas and uh, granola that I mix in a cup. <laughs> I shouldn't be revealing that. <laughs> I feel like that's a little bit embarrassing to reveal. But hey, um, we we had another question. Um, how did I get started with comedy in the first place? I was just in college and uh, I was running track and then I started doing bad at track. And then I was like, I got to find something else to do. And I was always interested in comedy. So I started doing a little bit of stand-up. Uh, I actually started stand-up near three women's colleges that are all kind of in a triangulated uh, position around uh, this bar called Bishop's Lounge. So I I started comedy in this, uh, this, like, open mic, which I didn't really know the nature of open mics, but it was, like, all women. So I thought, like, way more women did stand-up than they actually do. <laughs> which is a really funny way of starting comedy. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the flight schedule is actually, uh, really funny this weekend too. Cause I, so I flew from LA to DC last night and I got in at like, uh, 1am and then I'm flying, I'm waking up at 6am, uh, Sunday morning, flying to Atlanta, doing one show in Atlanta. I'm flying to Atlanta to do one show in Atlanta, and then I'm flying back to LA uh, on beautiful Spirit Airlines. Spirit Airlines, you might get there. Spirit Airlines, we'll see. <laughs> no, I don't, you know, I will say, Spirit, when it works, is it feels like you robbed somewhere. It feels like you got away with uh, grand larceny. It feels beautiful. When a Spirit flight works, folks, let me tell you something about flying. Um, it means that you basically teleported for the cost of a sandwich. That's cra That's an underrated thing about Spirit Airlines. Everybody talks shit. Oh, Spirit, they cancel a lot. They do cancel a lot. Oh, they're gonna like nickel and dime you over bags. Yeah, they do nickel. You you should you you're only pretty much allowed to wear a small purse, man or woman. But the underrated thing about Spirit Airlines is if it works out, 
you experience the majesty of flight for uh, the cost of a bushel of bananas. That's co that's cool. What they worked out there is really, really cool because it's for people who want to take a flight but don't really care when. And that that's a very that's a very interesting untapped market. It's a Spirit Airlines is is very and I don't I don't mean this condescendingly. I really do think it's a very interesting business idea. Spirit Airlines is for people who go, um, well, I would like to get to Atlanta sometime in between Monday and 2026. And I'm pretty indifferent about when that does happen. And I think that that's cool. I really do. I think I want to interview everybody who takes a spirit flight. I think that would be a fun, I think that would be a fun little test. I would say what low level comedian, musician or rapper is flying you out, miss? Are you going to see one of the Island Boys? Are you going to see, um, let me think, what was like a, what was like a band that was not even really big, but no, Primus. Are you going to see one of, the, <laughs> are you going to see, are you, is the bassist of Primus flying you out? <laughs> um, Yes. Oh, uh, we almost forgot. And th thank you so much for bringing that up, uh, Armand. Um, Hooters did have an airline. And we must never forget that. Hooters had an airline. That That's not the only thing that's interesting. I've actually looked into Hooters Airline, Armand. Um, the, that's, that's not even the most interesting thing about them. The interesting thing about Hooters Airline is that uh, one of the reasons they went under, and one of the big reasons they went under, is they couldn't find a way to allow people to eat wings on the flight. And the disjointedness of that turned off the average consumer. So Spirit Airlines went completely belly up because of the wings. I mean, in huge part because of the wings. And also, if you're gonna take a Spirit flight, that I mean, imagine you get on and it's like no wings and like a male flight attendant. You're, what are we doing here? What are what are we doing here? They should make. They really should make an airline geared towards uh, the female gaze, and I think that would do pretty well. I am I G A Z E, not gay women. Although, that would be Hooters Airline, to be honest with you. But I'm saying like the feet, like, or uh, like, I'm saying just an airline with stud, call it studs airlines. Because we've already been through and past the era where, you know, flight attendants wear tight little skirts and they're like, I'm sure they still are judged on their bodies, but it's not like a complete requirement now. Um, I say we just go, we go full studs airlines. Every flight attendant is the most jacked man you've ever seen in your entire life. If you have to go to the bathroom, they pick you up. <laughs> if you have to go to the bathroom, they lift you up off your seat and put you over their shoulder and carry you to the bathroom. <laughs> studs airline. This is not a bad idea. I mean, there's one, there's one, every flight, there's one designated, like, huge dude who puts all the uh, bags in the overhead compartment, and he's shirtless as hell, and he's sweating the whole time. I, I The more I'm talking about this, the more I don't find it to be a bad idea. I feel like, I feel like gay men would like it. I think straight women would like it. I think there's a lot of people who are bi that would enjoy that. And as a straight man, I want to see what the fellows are working with. And also I would like, I would like to feel taken care of like that, to be honest with you. I would like to be carried off the plane. <laughs> Studs airline.
the pilots are just just two two dudes who were chosen completely based on the fact that they are strong and they're really bad at flying. Like these dudes suck at flying. People always say like uh you know they judge the looks of their uh their pilots right like i i i even heard like a bunch there was a thing on what's it called tiktok where a bunch of people were like oh you know don't you feel unsafe when it's like a woman pilot it's like no i feel unsafe when the pilot is hot I, I feel unsafe when that's what makes me feel unsafe when a pilot is hot a man or woman I don't because if you're hot it or it, hot and young like I guess I guess you could be like a guy or a woman with a little salt and pepper and I wouldn't feel that uncomfortable but if you're a hot young person don't fly my plane I do not because I don't know what you got into last night. I don't want, I don't want that man or woman. It's for whatever kind of pile. I just want to, I want you to be a homebody. You know what I mean? I want last night. I want you to have played like league of legends until a reasonable hour. And then you went to bed and then you woke up and then you flow the plane. Like Denzel in the movie flight. Perfect example of what I'm talking about. Think about Den now. That's Denzel, man, right? But hot man. And what was he doing the night before? Blow and women. And that's not what you want from a pilot. Although I guess the whole point of that movie is that he did a great job. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> point taken. Ugh. Point take that whole movie. What is that? That that what a strange movie. Do do we remember that movie? Chat flight with Denzel Washington. Yeah, you want your pilot to look like they have a family to get home safely too. That exactly. I don't want my pilot coming in with ripped jeans and a nosebleed, and we haven't even taken off yet. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't uh, that doesn't feel good. I don't need that in a pilot. But the, the movie Flight, now correct me if I'm wrong. It's Denzel Washington. I really like the movie Flight. But it's about how if you are intoxicated, you'll do a good job landing a plane. Am I wrong? Am I wrong about that assessment of that movie? Correct. Tell me if I am. But it's about a guy who got loaded and then while loaded did the hardest aircraft maneuver imaginable am i right or am i wrong now i know there's stuff in between i know there's probably i'm going to take a guess like a statement about addiction in there there's probably uh there's probably what a little sprinkling of maybe like like a sobering moment where he looks at himself in the mirror for a long time i'm just guessing there's a big big long mirror look but at the end of the day, if we're all being honest, is or is that movie not about a guy who got hammered and happened? I'm not putting these two things together, but I could see where someone would put these two things together, where it's about how Denzel Washington was loaded and then on coke and then did great. I just don't know about the messaging of that movie. I, I'm just saying that I am not sure completely about that movie. What else we got to talk about? Folks, we're on the road. I'm stuck in this. Well, I'm not stuck in this bed. I could be doing anything. I decided to go back to my hotel room. I don't want to mince words with you folks. and I don't want to misrepresent myself. I could be outside. I could be doing other stuff. I decided to be here, sitting down in my hotel room, talking to you. Ain't that special for you? But yeah, the uh, the State of the Union was yesterday. Oh, I did actually want to talk about this a little bit. Ha have, have any of you in the chat, let me know, sound off. Have you ever watched the State of the Union on C-SPAN? 
Not CNN, not Fox. I don't, I'm not talking about with the graphics. I'm not talking about with the voiceovers. I'm not talking about with the, you know, sports center breakdowns. I'm talking C-SPAN. There's a camera in the room. The audio is in the room. They're getting busy. Have you ever seen the State of the Union on C-SPAN? Watch it. Watch the State of the Union on C-SPAN. It is so funny. Because the State of the Union, you think it's about the speech. No, it's about the before. Before the president does the speech, on C-SPAN, during the State of the Union, the camera is just panning to people talking to each other. And a lot of them just do not like each other. It is so funny. You'll see, like, you, you saw, like, Marjorie Taylor Greene talking to somebody, and then a dude just, like, looking at her like, like, it's so good. And then, by the way, and listen, I understand pomp and circumstance. I understand that there's like, if you're the president, you're going to flex a little bit, right? That you're the, you're ostensibly the most powerful person in America, even though you, for some reason, they do exactly what uh, billionaires want them to do almost every time. Uh, but the, no, they're the powerful one. The president is the powerful one who just happens to do exactly what billionaires want him to do because it's that's just that's just a little coincidence. <laughs> it's just it, listen. I I don't need any I don't need anyone uh, out there thinking bad or talking bad about our government. Okay, our our president is the most powerful person in the country who also just happens to do exactly what uh, the corporations want him to do every single time. And that's a coincidence. If you don't think that's a coincidence, I think you should be put on a list. A list that I do not want to be on. But um, before the State of the Union, the president will just walk, will walk in, and the walk-in takes longer than Floyd Mayweather walking into a boxing match. He shakes hands, with, like, he's just stunning on everybody. President Biden is just walking in, pointing, he's pointing. He's just point. the whole, this is the president, he's just, the whole, it's, I, I, no exaggeration, I think it was like 15 minutes of that. I remember because I was on I was on a plane and the plane didn't have like movies on on com demand or whatever, but it had a uh, live TV. And I saw like, oh, State of the Union. Cool. I'm gonna, I'll check that out. Let me let me see let me tune into the old S of the U. I don't know if that's ever how anyone puts it, but I'll, I'm going to tune into the S of the U. Let's see it. I turned on to the State of the Union, and the president was like just entering. I was like, oh, he's late, but okay. All right, whatever. He's late. I think that's cool. Uh, let's see Let's see the walk-in. I watched the walk-in. I got bored. I switched to a basketball game. It was UCLA, Arizona. I don't know how it went because I got off the flight. And I watched that for like 20 minutes. And then I, or not not 20 minutes, but definitely at least 10. I watched a basketball game for 10 minutes. I forgot about the State of the Union. Then I tune back in to be like, oh, let's see what the president is saying. It'll probably be like, he'll, he'll probably have already started. He's still walking to the stage. He's still walking to the stage. It is, what a spectacle. It is so, he's just still... It's awesome. He should, he should, the president should have to fight his way through. <laughs> Let's do it. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for as a country? The top Google result calls Biden feisty. I don't like, I don't like the word feisty. Feisty is, feisty is a word. He, etymology is really interesting to me. I actually do. I, I, I love words, even though I'm really bad at them and I don't have a great vocabulary. But whenever I learn a new word, I, I am always excited. Well, let's think about the common use of feisty. 
Feisty is generally when a thing that doesn't have a lot of power tries to exhibit it. Feisty. You're feisty. You you wouldn't call like like let's let's think about the things that you wouldn't call feisty. You wouldn't hear about like a marine defending a position from 30 enemy soldiers feisty. You wouldn't say you wouldn't say that guy's feisty. Yeah, it comes from feist, small dog. Wow, that's interesting. That's so fu well cuz I guess it's used properly then cuz like it's feist. That's not what you want. That if anyone calls you no, no one would, Arthur, I understand what you're doing or what you're saying, but no one would call Mike Tyson feisty. They would call him aggressive. They would call him scary. They would call him dominant. They wouldn't be like, oh my God, Mike Tyson is so feisty. <laughs> oh my God, it was so feisty how Mike Tyson killed that guy in the ring with his fists. <laughs> Feist, feisty is, is one of those words that sounds good and then when you kind of think about it and break it down you go I don't know if I would I don't know if I would like to be called feisty but hey you know I get he's up there he's up there I'll say that about him you can't say he wasn't he was up there and now, I, I don't know about you either, but I feel like now my problem's solved. I don't, I don't have any problems anymore. The world's good now. We can all agree on that, can't we? I mean, I, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be controversial. I want to say things everyone agrees with. So I think everyone will agree with this statement. Nothing's wrong and everything's good. Can we agree on that? Hmm? You think we can you think we can have some common ground on that one, folks? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I'm winking so much. That's it's a really bad habit. If you're if you're under the age of sixty-five, if if people are confident that you can still maintain an erection, you shouldn't wink as a man. Or you, you should suffer the consequences that come with it. Or, and have a mustache? Ugh. Again, put, put you on a list. You know what I mean? Put you on a list. Send you to Azkaban. <laughs> do you think when a Harry Potter, like an adult Harry Potter fan, do you think when they get arrested, uh, they go, oh no, now I have to go to Azkaban. <laughs> Off to ask a man. <laughs> Sir, uh, we found that you were, uh, we found that you were in a school zone and, uh, it has been federally mandated that you are not allowed near those. Oh no, off to ask a man. <laughs> oh man. Oh boy. Well, I'm I'm uh I'm about to head over to the show. Uh please throw the video a like. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate the subs. Uh we're trying to get to 10,000. We're almost there, which is pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. Seeing as that um I've been pretty inconsistent with posting on YouTube, but people are very nice and we're almost up to 10,000 subscribers. So uh if you can throw a little like there, I have a bunch of other videos. I do stand up, I wash dishes. Those are the two things I do. I wish I could like rattle off a bunch of stuff that I do, but that's about it. But I have uh I have the uh the dishwashing videos on there. And I, you know, there's a podcast, but that's kind of just me talking like this. But uh but anyway, yeah, and uh, you can get tickets if you want to see me in Atlanta or DC. Uh you can get tickets in the little link in the description here, and that also brings you to, you know, my other my other social media. But the stuff that's really important to me is, you know, if you subscribe here, maybe see me live. That's really about it. You'll get my podcast here and uh, all the other stuff you could possibly want. I'm going to record a podcast tomorrow, too. Um, and other than that, thank you so much for being with me. Oh, God. Ugh. Being with...
Thank you so much for being with me. I'll get better at 